For more on Ukraine, let's bring in Jamil Jaffer. He's the founder and executive director of the National Security Institute and former associate White House counsel to President George W. Bush. Thanks for being here with us this morning. So let's start with the revival of the Lend-Lease Act that Vicky mentioned a little bit ago. This famously allowed the U.S. to quickly send arms to its allies in Europe during World War II, but it also drew the U.S. into that conflict. Of course, that's been a concern here this whole time. Are you concerned about the U.S. becoming too entangled in Ukraine? I mean, beyond sending in American troops, which we have said we will not do, are there any other red lines before getting to that point that are too far when it comes to U.S. support for Ukraine that could ratchet this up with Russia? Well, you know, Savannah, uh, during the World War II, uh, the U.S. had sort of this pretense of neutrality, um, and the Middle East were sort of changed the dynamic at that point. Uh, the reality is that uh, from the beginning, we've supported the Ukrainians in this conflict. We've poured a ton of weapons um, and humanitarian aid into that conflict. Uh, this is just another methodology that actually just lightens up the requirements on the president uh, to do some things he was already doing, providing direct support and uh, lending and leasing uh, material to the Ukrainians and other allies uh, in this fight. So in a lot of ways, this legislation simply lightens up requirements. It doesn't fundamentally change the dynamic going forward, which has been now for a long time for the uh, nearly three months of this war, uh, the U.S. provided significant supplies, military equipment, and humanitarian aid to the Ukrainians directly. Now, the, on Capitol Hill, the House is expected to vote today on a new package of military aid and humanitarian aid to Ukraine. President Biden says actually that without this money, shipments to Ukraine would have to stop in approximately nine days. Just how dependent is Ukraine on U.S. weapons and money at this point? And do we have a sense of whether it's enough? Well, look, there's no doubt that the weapons and equipment provided by the United States and our allies have been critical to this fight. The Javelin missiles they're using against tanks, the Stinger missiles they're using against uh, uh, aircraft, uh, you know, the uh, these new drones that we've now equipped them with uh, that are going to be game changers of the flight, uh, you know, the, the switchblade drones, the new Phoenix Ghost drones. So these are very important parts of the thing. Obviously, uh, the Ukrainians have been doing a lot on their own, uh, their own capabilities, their own Willingness to take this fight to the Russians have been important in this fight. Uh, But there's no question that without the support of the U.S. and our allies, uh, the Ukrainians are going to face a dramatically uh, uphill battle against Mm. the Russians, which do who do have a larger, more capable force uh, than they put on the battlefield yet thus far. Jamil Jaffer, thank you so much. We appreciate your time this morning.